We take very different shots. That's true. It's almost like two photographers taking pictures, not just one. I think this shit is going to go really well. Are you ready? Yeah, I am. Okay, good. Today, we are in centre London, in a theatre district, filming some food photography. What's in your bag, Becky? Uh, today I've got the 50mm f2.8 macro Z lens and I've also packed the 85 1.8 just to do a little bit of interesting, almost food portraiture I'm going to go for. I see, so I had to bring everything else basically. Yeah, essentially. So what Sorry. have you got? <laughs> Alright, well I've got Z7 with a nice small rig L plate. It's actually um, a Z7 II you've got It's there. Z7 II, that's true. It's so fancy. There's so many Z7s that I can't even know which one is which. <laughs> But I've got 1424 on it for some, thank you back here, I was about to drop it, but you know. <laughs> um, I've got 1424 for some interior shoots, which is always nice to have. Mm -hmm. I've got 50 micro as well, since we're going to do a lot of macro food photography today. Yeah. And we also got 2473 Z6, which we are filming at, with DJI Ronin gimbal. Very snazzy. Bunch of lights, tripods. Yes, yeah, so you brought everything, really exactly. and I just packed two lenses and a camera. That's Absolutely. <laughs> Sometimes we just show up. <laughs> just show up and shoot. Unannounced. But we would like to thank Opera Tavern, uh, which is a beautiful tapas place for inviting us to actually try out food, but photograph it first, of course. Yes, we're going to photograph it before we start eating it. Uh, great. Well, shall we take some pictures of food then? Absolutely. It's about time. We yeah. don't want it to get too cold. first starter on the menu, and I love to start my morning with a bit of anchovies, mm. just to bring a little bit of aroma, <laughs> a little bit of spice in my life. Before you speak to all our customers. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> because nothing says friendly than the anchovy bread uh -huh. in your face. Lovely. All right. Well, now this out of the way, let's talk how we're we going to shoot this. Okay. So for me, because it's a very simple dish mm -hmm. and it's very uh, symmetrical, mm -hmm. Or it's actually slightly asymmetrical, but it kind of has that very on the on the wooden table that Instagram look. So it's all about the gram, isn't it? It makes me kind of feel like I should be shooting it in square format, which I do shoot a lot of the time. All right. Um, well, I want you to show me. I want you to show me. So okay. you're going to use 50 mil macro, which we I both am. have. I am. Okay. So I'm going to do a shot. It's the tabletop photography. Yeah, exactly. At I'm gonna its use, finest. I'm going to use the depth of field that's reasonable. I'm going to use about f4. Mm -hmm. All right, and I want it slightly underexposed, so it's not it's not too bright. So you get the mood, right? The lighting is beautiful, so mm -hmm. I think it's good. So, but it looks like we have a bit of empty space going on. We there. do have quite a lot, which is why I personally am going to put it on the square crop, and I'm going to show you now. Look at it in square. All I can say that. <laughs> Becky is still in Instagram from 2015 when they use square format, but <laughs> Thanks. there is something special about putting circle in the square, I think, and it frames it composition-wise really well. It does. I yeah. mean, I would, obviously, I'm going to shoot in full format and then probably crop it down to a square afterwards just to make sure that yeah. I give myself a bit of space. But if you want to do it in camera, then potentially you can do that. Yeah, yeah. which okay. I do a lot okay. of the time. All right, and I'm going to be like Jamie Oliver, and I'm just going to get a bit of olive oil and say, just a little bit of olive oil, and you just like... Just a drizzle. And just a like drizzle, and that looks like a just a drizzle, isn't it? So what, which angle are you going to shoot this I from? think that works pretty well this way. Mm -hmm. We can try to shoot it from the angle, but I think a lot of food photography works really well from tabletop setup. Mm -hmm. And because the shape of the dish, it's quite flat. Yeah. So the tabletop make, makes sense yeah. overall. And I think the light in here provides, so we've got natural light coming from here. We've got daylight coming from the studio continuous light here, which we have Godox. Yeah. So I think you've nailed it personally, but we're going to do some angle shots just in case, just for the feels, you know, a bit of just shallow because. depth of field, exactly. You know you what know? would be great with it though? Yeah, is some like salt and pepper? Some salt and pepper, but I'm thinking like maybe some bread. Exactly, crusty bread. Well, how would you normally eat that? Because I don't eat Well, anchovy. I would put anchovy on top of my bread. Right. And I would do, give it a bite, and then I would dip the bread in the on the olive oil. oil. Okay. Exactly, that's so just, you know. Maybe we can get some bread, add it to it, and then it might create a bit more dynamic. Absolutely. Then, field from minimalistic look, mm -hmm. we're going to create a bit of atmospheric look, isn't it? Yes. Hello. 
Oh, ah, perfect timing. Oh, wow, look at that. It's not almond butter, <gasps> and the best to have it with the dry white wine and sherry. So we've got boccherones, aka anchovies, with uh, green peppercorns, abrakina olive oil, and lemon thyme. Wow. I think this shit is going to go really well. <laughs> Enjoy. Ending at 3am in Soho. <laughs> okay, okay. All right, All right. so... I, I quite like the addition of the menu just for this yes. because I think that it gives it a little bit more juxtaposition. Well, exactly. And for commercial shoot, you want to add a little bit of sense of place where you are. Yeah, exactly. So now my question is going to be the angle. I think we need to play around with the positioning of these items. Exactly. So tabletop is not going to work this way. No. It may no, look exactly. interesting, but I think the angle, just a nice angle would work. Actually, I think with the 50, mm -hmm. this angle works slightly better, but I've got a lot of shadow on this side. Okay, so why won't I just move the light here? So yeah. we've got it balanced a little bit. So the idea is if we're doing this angle, then we need to put the main dish at the front Yeah. because it's quite flat. Yeah, exactly. Then we're going to put a flat bread, which is not flat in this case, <laughs> no pun intended, then at the back. So you see, you, you start to get the elevation. Okay, yeah, you I, see the I like that. There? I like that. And then we can still shoot this angle but now it's going to look a little bit a little different. bit more interesting exactly okay i think what worked for me right now mm. is actually a bit of close-up so you include the kind of half of the dish and half of the flat yeah, bread in one I like shot that. that's partly the beauty of the 50 because the 85 as gorgeous as it is it doesn't focus close enough that's true for this kind of thing And here's an accessory that for this type of shoot is always useful because sometimes you just don't have enough light and you need to bounce light around. <laughs> a bit more light. Exactly. Yeah. So what you do is you take it out yeah. and then you do one, two, three. What? <laughs> Skills. And it's almost was all over the place. <laughs> but this is quite useful. So we've got just a natural diffusion. Mm -hmm. Or if you want to get a bit of warm. You've got a gold diffuser. Exactly. Okay, so nice. And that's quite good. Mm -hmm. So this is broccoli tempura with jalapeno aglio olio. When you say tempura and broccoli in one place, it doesn't make sense, but it is here on the table and we will try it out it's later. Also, it's also vegan. I'm out. <laughs> but it looks amazing and it smells incredible. And then this is uh, it's like a tortelloni, isn't it? All right, it? I know yeah. what it is. This is what they call pelmeni, which is a Russian dumplings <laughs> in a fancy way. It's really not. So I've gone again, like kind of simple. I just have shot this at a bit of an angle. Yeah, a bit of a tabletop. Yeah, not not head on, because that doesn't really work for me on this dish. There's actually a little bit too much going on and it's not symmetrical, yeah. but... But you know the thing about this mm. is because you've got this cheese on top and it's quite light, normally you would overexpose quite a bit with yeah. photography. In this case, you start to lose the texture of the cheese. Yeah, it's true. So you do want to preserve it. Do you think if we put the three dishes together, yeah, that sounds good. And then we use one as the main focus, and then the other two as kind of background dishes. We've got the octopus with smoked almond hummus, crispy chickpeas, and tapioca pearl with squid ink and crisps, and some more jalapeno. Wow. Okay. okay. I had the crisps, I mean. <laughs> it's got crisps in it. All right, let me put that one there. Let's just let. All right, well, I'll let that. you take this round. And now I'm starting to, with all the other shots before, I'd wanted to really underexposed, but with mm -hmm. this one, I definitely feel like I want it slightly over. Ooh, the yes. <gasps> Where this jamon goes, goes with, with the steak, yeah? It can be pouring on top of chicken. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not driving today. <laughs> Let's just bounce the light a little bit. What okay. do you think, Becky? That's fine. I, I'm using this wine as my prop in every single yeah, do you thing now. <laughs> it's just, it fills up the space. This is a useful thing about having yeah. drinks on the table. Absolutely, it looks like a it, traffic light, isn't it? It fills so. the... <laughs> All right, let me bounce a little bit. Do you a want it warm or do you want it just natural? I'd like it natural. Warm okay. looks kind of weird. That's going to look well, tabletop. Sideways, all you know. Yeah, I like the, the little um, gold in it as well. 
You see what I mean? Like the edge of the table, the gold really works. The minimum focusing distance on the 50mm macro is 16 centimetres, which means that you've got this very close working distance and you can produce this lovely shallow depth of field, which you can't get on normal 50mm lenses necessarily because you can't get quite so close. All right, let's try the golden bit because I want it to look weird. Okay. <laughs> Uh, there you go, that's it. Like, like this, that? like that. Okay. That's that's exactly how I want it. If you want a slightly more shallow depth field, as long as you can have enough details in the picture, mm. you can go a little bit lower, like five, six, but I wouldn't go to a four or something like this because then you get like just a first centimeter in and then everything else is blurry. Yeah, so. obviously for flat lays, if the food is not too, uh, let's say, geographical, then exactly. you can shoot with a lower aperture like f4, but yeah. otherwise... Or even f11, doesn't really matter. No. But at the same time, if you've got a bit of background going and you want it to be blurry, then it's a fine balance of shooting that very small aperture, something like f11, and keeping the background blurry as well. Yeah. I find very interesting, mm -hmm. looking at your shots versus mine, is that we have the exact same setup, the same lighting, and yet we take very different shots. That's true. It's almost like two photographers <laughs> taking pictures, not just one. Yes. That's but very I, interesting. I like that. I like, you know, I, I kind of went for the high key look, making everything mm -hmm. look a little bit overexposed. On some of the shots, you've chosen more like an ambiance, moody. Absolutely. It's just because you were taking the main spot and <laughs> I had to work around you. So, uh, but how do you feel about the lens? So obviously you bought one. Yes. But you haven't tried it for this type of setup. No. What are your thoughts? Um, I think it works great for food photography. Yeah. More so than the 85, which I brought along. I used the 85 for some kind of placements and detail shots and it produced some lovely rendering for that kind of thing, but for mm -hmm. food it's very impractical. That's true, because the focusing distance is not as close. No, it's, um, what is it, it's about a meter I think, Yeah. I'll double check that, but anyway. Yeah, so, so unless you shoot with a high resolution camera where it allows you for good cropping, like, like Z7 for example, mm. then it's not very practical to shoot otherwise, unless again it's for social media and then you can crop it resolution, it doesn't matter. Yeah, and if you've got quite a lot of space to work with, then it's also fine, but then it becomes a matter of, okay, where does your light go? Um, where does the dish go? How do you, so the 85 is nice to have, but mm -hmm. definitely the 50 has been more useful for today. Absolutely. I do find the whole environment quite stressful because I feel so hungry right now, just Starving. looking at it. So it's a tough job to photograph food is it all the smells yeah you know around as long, as long as you're allowed to eat it afterwards i think that <laughs> that's true it's okay it's okay okay what um else? and i also think that when shooting any kind of food photography whether commercial or at home what you put what you plate with as the term goes and what you have to kind of accessorize the table makes all the difference yeah, so different surfaces different backgrounds different colors of the plates exactly. and medium, medium plus as and well and texture absolutely and then we here we use actually two lights here so one is the continuous light but also one is the natural light that comes from the window so that helps as well yeah for sure. and then we can use reflector to fill in the shadows if we need to but we don't we try not to use flash today just to eliminate this kind of artificial look, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. And I think that this having a daylight light has made a huge difference to how the pictures look because then you don't get that over shiny, sort of almost waxed look That's to true. the pictures, which you don't want. Everything here is fresh. None of the food is uh, props. It's all edible and it's fresh from the kitchen, which means that we've also had a time limit to work with, which makes life very interesting. Absolutely. You have to work really quickly, isn't it? So when it comes in, it's nice and hot. You need to take the shot, yeah. then move on to the next one. Yes, exactly. One thing about the light that we use, we try to use as large a soap box as possible. Yeah. Just to spread the light as much as we can, just to make it look more like a daylight. So, and in terms of white balance, we have preset at 56 Kelvins. 
So there's no point of using ultra wide balance because you want to get the same look on all images. And it's going to be easier to edit overall in the post. That's for sure. I also will say that for the action shots, obviously using continuous has helped massively using quite a fast shutter speed. So that's where ISOs come in handy. For me, the biggest thing that I found handy is actually using the back screen. I agree with you. Then the, the, it being tiltable is quite good because yeah. if you do a tabletop setup, yeah. for something like, okay, I've, got, I've gone through D810 and D800, which didn't have that. To get a shot like this, you really have to kind of pray and spray or you have to really climb up. And yeah. sometimes you don't have this luxury in an environment like this. Mm. So having something like this where you can actually see the image and you can line it up also using, let's say, virtual horizon, just make sure that you're flat enough, it is very useful. Next camera I have needs a fully tilting screen. It needs to go all the way down. Well, what you can do back is actually yeah. do it this way. Not very practical, but you do have the screen here and you may just need to uh, turn the images upside down later oh, on. Oh, look at that. Okay, yeah, it's a bit awkward to get to the AF on exactly. button, but... It, it's a workaround. It's it not is. exactly, a, let's say, a solution per se, but it's usable. I quite like that, actually. And then I just have to remember that those shots were composed upside down and flipped them. Exactly. Excellent. Well, thank you, Con. I learned something. Did I mention I'm hungry mm. and I like food? A few times. In general? A few times. Yeah. very much for watching please do give us a like and a subscribe and let us know what you'd like to see more of in the comments and thank you very much again to operate tavern for letting us in letting us to try their food and take some lovely shots for them absolutely <laughs>